It's Bengals and Bills on Monday Night Football. Let's take a first look at the primetime matchup, plus injury updates. Andrew Whitworth to the Bengals. Why, it doesn't seem that realistic. And so much more right here on CBT, Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and remember that we're a one-stop shop for all things Cincinnati Bengals here on YouTube. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Shout out to Rivertown Inquiry for getting these hats made for us. Yeah, little Cincinnati Bengals Talk swag. Look at that. Ooh-wee. Let's go. And man, just in time too for primetime Bengals Bills. We're going to discuss that in just a second. But first, let's start with some injury updates. And first things first, Lyle Collins out for the season. We know that. We know uh, how unfortunate it is. Uh, Ted Karras, you know, was really you know upset about it. You could say that. You could see that when he talked, and and that's one of the many videos that we've posted already. Uh, from the locker room. Logan Wilson, another one, matching up against Josh Allen for the first time. So there's a lot of stuff on our channel already ahead of this Bengals-Bills game. And look, it's, it's rough. And yet I look at it, and in Akeem Adeniji, to me, can he be serviceable? I think it's realistic for him to be serviceable. I know there were some calls about Andrew Whitworth and calls for Andrew Whitworth and speculation about Andrew Whitworth. I want to be perfectly clear. I think Andrew Whitworth would be uh, able to, to come in and would be able to, if his head was in it, which I think it would be if he did did so, and he hasn't turned this down, I think he would be able to come in and be a serviceable right tackle. And that's what you want uh, from Akeem Adeniji. That's what you want from anyone that, uh, that you are asking to play that spot this time of year because of an injury to one of your starters. And I think Akeem Adeniji is going to be the guy. I don't think Andrew Whitworth is coming out of retirement. And that said... This offense should still be able to function with Adeniji. And especially when they get a guy like Hayden Hurst back, another weapon, the way they do it, the way they do things. It's not like Lyle Collins was a the world's best pass blocker this season. He wasn't. And at times he struggled. At times he struggled a lot. And so do they lose some power in the run game? Yes. Are they going to be as good on the ground? Maybe not. But they haven't been good on the ground consistently all year. And they've been okay at times. And they've flashed and they've been efficient. This is a drop back passing team. And so as long as they can stay efficient on the ground when they need it, they're going to win. They're going to lose. They're going to ride or die with Joe Burrow. We saw that in Foxborough when they ran the ball, uh, not nearly as much as they threw it. They threw the ball 52 times and they were slinging it all over the darn place. Right. And so Akeem Adeniji was a part of that. And I know that the second half offense, you could say, oh, well, the offense stalled in the second half. That wasn't Adeniji's fault. There was a lot of reasons for that. It wasn't because there was just pressure off the right side, and that's what derailed the Bengals' offense. So we'll see, but I, I think that Adeniji is going to be the guy there. Hayden Hurst making his way back. Zach Taylor, extremely optimistic that Hayden Hurst is going to return after missing three straight games. Was close to playing last week, but instead of, of pushing it, especially in the cold weather, they waited another week. Sounds like he's going to be good to go this week against Buffalo, which is huge because, let's be honest, this has all the makings of a shootout. This has all the makings of one of those games where it's Joe Burrow, it's Josh Allen, and they're going up and down the field, up and down the field, up and down the field. Now, the defenses have something to say about that, and I think both defenses are talented and can get stops and are going to make big plays. So it's not going to be that simple. But if you keep Joe Burrow upright, we've seen what he can do, and I expect this offensive line to still be able to do that and that means Hayden Hurst is just going to be one of the many, many weapons that Burrow has at his disposal. And in this team, the good thing, and I, I think it's a good thing, and I asked Zach this on, on Tuesday. When you win seven straight, sometimes it's hard to stay focused and not get caught up in your own news clippings. But when you're playing like the Bengals have played in the past two weeks, where you play awful on the first half, down 17 nothing and 17-3 to at halftime, then you storm back and you have a nearly perfect second half in Tampa Bay. And then you play amazing, perfect, outside of the, the interception in the first half against New England. And then everything that could go wrong did go wrong in the second half against the Patriots. And you find a way to win both games. One, the streak stays alive. Everything that you've needed to go your way, it was enough to, to escape. 
but you also have enough to keep reaching for. You're not just blowing these teams out. You're not just rolling over, uh, you're rolling them over and just crushing them every single week and rolling them, you know, taking a uh, a crane to them, right, and just crushing them. It, it, th- that's not the case. And, yeah, I, I got my uh, machines mixed up there. But you get my point, right, is you're not just destroying team by team. You have things to – teaching points and coaching points and things to go over. And that part of it, I think, is a good thing because you could say, hey, Joe Burrow, you threw a pick six. Hey, Tyler Boyd, you can't stop on your route. Hey, offensive line, here, 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 and here is where you need to get better. Hey, we didn't really establish the run. On defense, yeah, did Kendrick Bourne really go off against you? How does Jacoby Myers catch that deep ball? How did they find a way to get back in this game? And there's so many teaching points in there. And so we'll see, but I think that's good going up and going into a game like this with the Bills. If they had just crushed the Patriots, I think the feeling, the vibe would be different. And instead, it's, all right, well, they have to find a way to put a full game together. Now, they're not going to be perfect for 60 minutes against the Bills, but they need to raise that floor from bad first half or bad second half to solid. And if they're solid at their worst, I think they have a really good shot of beating the Bills. Uh, Real quick, shout out, like I said, to Rivertown Rivertown Inquiry shirt, rocking the hat that they put together for us. Really nice design. They do not have these in stores, but you never know. That could change. But, uh, you know, if you want some Cincinnati Bengals talk swag in your life. But I I know our channel coordinator, Andrew Fox Miller, happy these came in. He gets to rock them. Had to pick them up this morning. And I was like, oh, I'm definitely wearing them in my my first video. So if you see this hat on Monday Night Football in the stands, it's probably Andrew wearing it. Let's, uh, Let's hit on Evan McPherson for just a second. Because... He hasn't been the same this year. You know, the numbers are a bit off. Missed three kicks on Saturday. One didn't count, was nullified by a penalty, but still missed two extra points. Like I said, one didn't count, and then he also missed the the 43-yard field goal. I treat Evan McPherson the same way I treat Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, you know, some of these established, Trey Hendrickson, some of these established stars, DJ Reader on this Bengals team. Or if they have a bad game or an uncharacteristic mistake or issue or, I just assume they're going to bounce back. And maybe at 23 years old, Evan McPherson doesn't have that equity with you, with a lot of people. But let's be honest. He sucked on Saturday. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's awful. You can't miss two extra points in a, a 43-yard field goal. Like, that's awful. And yet, I expect him to bounce back. And the thing I like about Evan the most is he doesn't get rattled. He doesn't, you know, if, if he makes it, you know, he may have a little bit of an edgy comment or something like that, but it's not going to be, you know, crazy where he's like, oh, I'm the, you know, I'm the best kicker ever. No, he doesn't get that high. And he's not going to get that low when he has some issues. And we saw it, it, it was the weather played a factor in that, but he's going to have to kick in weather. And he kicked in weather last year and was very successful. I expect that. Uh, to be the same starting on Monday. So we'll see if Evan McPherson can can bounce back. They call him Money Mac for a reason, a name I uh, came up with on Locked on Bengals. So hopefully, hopefully, he turns a corner because if the Bengals are going to beat the Bills, if they're going to beat the Ravens, if they're going to, to get the one seed or make a playoff push, they're going to need Evan McPherson to be Money Mac. So we'll see if he can bounce back. I certainly expect him to. Make sure you get to Rivertown, rivertowninquiry.com, and... Uh, let me know, by the way, in the comments if you'd be interested in a hat like this because maybe maybe we can make a few more of them with Rivertown. Like I said, we're not selling them right now or anything like that. But if there's interest, you never never say never. For Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, I'm James Rapine signing off for now where tomorrow, Thursday, is going to be like our Wednesday. So you're going to hear from Joe Burrow, Zach Taylor, locker room interviews were loaded all week long. It's Bengals, it's Bills, Monday Night Football. We have you covered right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.